Aha! Hiya, back here again in the mini garage slash spray booth. Um, just thought I'd show you how we're getting on with these drive shafts. Here they are, just bought them in here because I'm going to put a bit of paint on them in my spray booth. Um, all good, so the next video coming up will be how I got from the uh, bits on the desk to finishing these off, cutting them down and welding them. So, yeah, that's coming up. Uh, after that, we're going to be doing some painting. I've managed to get some of these doors and bonnet and boot and everything. You know, I'll take it off and then you can have a look. Uh, here we go, we've got two doors and the uh, bonnet hanging up on, on there. On my piece of wire running across the room. The wire being what I'm actually making my proper day job. So yeah, they're uh, fixed on steel brackets, like a clevis pin, M12 threaded rod, and then a six mil stainless cable running across. And then this side, got the rear subframe hanging up, like the meat, the boot lid, and the Nissan Micro Mini front subframe. That, that weighs an absolute ton. So you can see how much this wire is holding up. I mean, the rear subframe's not that heavy, but um, there's the other type of product to make with the polished solid stainless steel bracket, which can fix to walls or rafters or ceilings or garden posts or anything you want. Anything you want tied together one end to another. This is what I make pulls window frames back into position and walls back into position and ties rafters together and yeah that's what I do but yeah this is um, really where all the painting happens but that's for the next video so yeah enjoy this one about the drive shafts I'll stop prattling on about them after this video and we'll get back to some bodywork. But um, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe if you can, if you haven't already. Uh, like or dislike. Put a comment, leave me a message. Um, anything you want to do, basically. So I'll uh, catch you on the next one. All the best. Well, back again with these uh, drive shafts. Um, I'm just going to try and convince myself I'm doing the right thing here. What I've got here is I've got these selected pairs of drive shafts. I've got the two mini ones and I've got the two micro ones. Uh, the basic principle is I've got to chop, chop them down, use uh, the four ends and weld them together. So looking at looking at these two here, that is the that is the micro one at the top and that's the mini one at the bottom. I've marked with some blue tape where I'm going to be cutting these down and now I've got to decide how I'm going to join them together because cutting them down is pretty straightforward. Just just get your grinder out and uh, lop the end off. I think the um, the decision, the big decision is how I'm going to join them together. Uh, there's the easy route where you just weld them together, uh, but butt them up and weld them, which isn't particularly strong. Um, I've seen people who uh, overlap them. Uh, sometimes they cut at an angle to give more of a welding uh, diameter on there. Uh, I've seen sleeves put over the top tubular sleeves to try and reinforce or bolster the joint up and I've also seen them where they've been toothed 
and what I mean by toothed is um, instead of just taking the shaft and slicing it they take the shaft and they cut cut it in a, in a notch fashion so when they come to weld them together instead of having just two shafts trying to break apart doing that they're actually bearing on top of each other and then a, then a cylindrical piece of well, piece of tube just goes over the top to reinforce it um, looking on videos and Facebook and stuff when these welded drive shafts fracture and break they never, they never pull apart like that, they don't snap apart like that, it, it's the torque going through from the from the engine obviously to the front wheels um, basically the torque is uh, trying to rotate the shaft and fracture it that way so anything I can do to try and mitigate that I'm going to try and do and my idea is is use some of these ideas which are already out there but just maybe just take it that little bit further and what I want to do is I want to turn the cut ends of the shaft into like a little square drive so what I intend to do is is change 30 mil of the cut end of the drive shaft from a from a circle into a square and then instead of having a piece of cylindrical tube I will have a uh, a box section joining the drive shafts and hopefully pushing a square section drive shaft into there and a square section drive shaft into there maybe in the middle have some holes I can weld into and then welding the perimeter all the way round that squareness will stop the drive shaft joint from shearing in half well that's the plan anyway I've got no problem with that not being circular I mean if people are going to use a bit of tube I'm just using a piece of square tube instead but just benefiting from the properties of that it's got four flat sides resisting the you know the torque going through the going through the drive shafts so that's the logic of it I've obviously got the problem of machining a circle into a square and I've got a milling machine I've got something on the milling machine that will mill down metal all I've got to do is control the rotation of the shaft as I'm milling it to make the cut end square and my intention with that is on the redundant end of each of the drive shafts I'm using, the four halves I'm just going to blob on with a bit of weld just a slightly bigger square section and as I am skimming the top of the drive shaft to give it a flat surface I'll do one and mic it up and check it and then I'll rotate it onto the next flat do the same next flat do the same next flat do the same now if I had a um, a dividing head on the milling machine bed something what controls the rotation like the, like, um, the chuck on a lathe if I had a uh, calibrated one of those it would be dead simple you could just turn it, keep turning it through 90 degrees on the chuck but um, I haven't got one of them I've never used one of them before I don't want to spend over 200 quid on a piece of equipment I'm only ever going to use once so I'm going to try this little chick a trick of using a piece of square tube to um, to calibrate the rotation in 90 degree implements and see how we get on with that 
but if it all fails and it doesn't work uh, I can buy a I can buy a new pair of drive shafts um, brand new I think they're about £430 delivered um, but I'd rather not spend £430 so let's just give this a go it's a bit of an experiment um, could turn into an epic fail or it could be the greatest success since I don't know, since Boris Johnson, but let's see what happens. Right, so this is the imaginary setup. Nothing's bolted down yet, but this is the idea. I'll support the drive shafts on these two blocks. Um, these blocks come off my hydraulic press over there. Um, these will be bolted down to the bed. The drive shaft will be able to rotate within the V of these two blocks. There's two pieces of blue masking tape on there. What I've got to basically do is, is turn the metal of the shaft between these two pieces of masking tape. I've got to turn that area into a square so basically, once I've turned that into a square, I want this piece of sleeve to slide onto it. Sounds simple enough. What I've done on this end here, and this is the redundant end, I won't be needing any of this after, it's just the, it's just the front part I'm after. This is 30mm tube, 3mm wall whilst that is 25mm I've fitted that on there and once I've milled that flat I can rotate it clamp it down mill the next flat rotate it clamp it down mill the next flat and so on I should be able to work out how much to mill off this to create the flat. Uh, I've just, I've just, um, I've just marked that up there, and the diameter is 23 and a half in that area. I'm looking at trying to create a square which is 19 mil. So I need to mill off each side, but in total four and a half mil. So I need to mill off two and a quarter mil. Off each of the four faces and that should bring me down to a 19 mil square so that's the plan turning a circle into a square I think there's a song about that so yeah hopefully I've explained that right so I've got to now figure out how to bolt this lot down um, so nothing moves during the little milling process I haven't got to take much off, it's, it's a really lo light, slow pass. Um, and then see if I can slide that on. I think the only problem with these tubes is they they aren't extru extruded as a, as a square. They're actually made out of sheet metal and formed and then welded. You can see the you can see the weld line along there so you get a little bit of you get a little bit of the weld line inside the chamber there which could interfere with it being smacked on or it might help but we'll see so yeah back shortly I've had to adapt the way this is sitting in the in the machine only slightly um, there's a lot of vibration um, due to the length of the shaft uh, the cutter not being the best in the world well the machine not being the best in the world I mean um, it is quite noisy and this and this steel is is really difficult to to mill down it's 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 rock hard it's so dense I think it's made out of Thor's hammer or something like that so it's taken a quite a while to um, 
to take the material off. I'm going quite slowly, um, I'm trying not to get the heat to build up too much, but it does work, which I suppose is a bonus. I'm milling a flat between these two uh, pieces of blue tape. It's stopped on these two um, bed stops here, so it can only go a certain distance that way and that way. Um, but I flip it over to do an opposing side. I've still got the block welded on there, the square tube, which allows me to be specific on the rotation. So, yeah, seems to work. Um, 23 and a half mil diameter original, mill one face down to 21 and a half flip it over, mill the other face to a thickness down to 19 and a half mil which is the inner inner diameter of the of the square uh, joining tube I'll be using. So say on the TV this is what I've prepared earlier so yeah it's like the square drive of a socket basically a socket set. I'll heat this tube up to expand it and then I'll be able to slide that on quite nicely. Like I say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a couple of holes on each side of this joining tube so I can get right in there and have a go at getting some weld. We'll start fusing these two drive shafts together as they come as they come in each side. So yeah, that's the that's the micro gearbox end. Sleeve will go on there. I'll finish this other micro uh, inner end lop it off and then I'll have to concentrate on the mini ones which are a little bit of a fatter diameter so where that is got rounded corners the mini ones will have square corners which I'll need to round off to mimic the shape of the joining tube so all good so far, just very, very laborious and long-winded. Not so much uh, British Aerospace, a um, bit more Stevenson's rocket, I think this is. Thank you. 